There is no doubt that we are living in what some might say are unique and crazy and for many of us very tumultuous times. And because of that, what I wanted to bring to you today are just a few of my own thoughts in terms of how I am preparing for an uncertain future with my big dogs. So in this video, I will be providing five tips for emergency preparedness and really how to prepare for an uncertain future with your big dog. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. And if you are new here, my name is Stephanie, AKA Big Dog Mom. And on this channel, I provide information and resources to help you and your big dog live your best life together. If 2020 and 2021 are any indication of what is to come in the future, it behooves us as big dog owners to make sure that we're prepared. What I wanna do in this video is just share with you five tips for emergency preparedness, preparedness for an uncertain future with your big dog. So the t first tip that I have, have for you was really born out of a trip that we just recently took to my father's house, actually. He lives about a thousand miles away. And on that trip, I was listening to sources of information and in numerous pieces of news and information that I was, was paying attention to, they talked about shortages in dog food. And so because I primarily feed raw food, I wasn't as aware of what was happening in the pet food market. So this tip in, and tip number one is stock up on dog food. So whether you are a raw feeder or a kibble feeder, I think this tip applies to you. And I would recommend that all dog owners, all big dog owners especially, because our dogs consume so much more food, have dog kibble on hand. And so again, whether you're a raw feeder or a kibble feeder, I do believe every one of us needs to have some room temperature shelf stable kibble food on hand. You know, I'm not talking about going all, you know, doomsday prepper. That's not what I'm suggesting. I don't think you need to go to your pet store and get a whole pallet of dog food. I'm sure there are people that can not afford that and do do that, but that is not what I'm suggesting. I'm just saying, if you normally purchase kibble and you would normally buy one or two bags each time you go to the store, I would consider buying three or four bags if you can afford it. Maybe you know try to negotiate with your pet store and see if they can't give you a bulk discount. I know many stores that do that. So just consider buying that now. You know Whether it's shortages in pet food or an inflation in prices in pet food, it, if you have been to the grocery store at any point in the last few months, I have seen a dramatic increase in the prices of food and all sorts of food related items. So it's not just food itself, but, but meat especially has dramatically increased in price. That is affecting all sorts of other food items. And so I can only imagine that the dog food supply issues are partially related to uh, the meat issues that we are having. Like when I went to the pet store, this morning to get a couple of extra bags of kibble, kibble on hand. What I was talking to the salesperson, he was actually sharing with me that the supply issues are primarily related to the bigger kibble manufacturers, the Purina, the, the bigger dog food companies, because they actually will package other foods, other brands as well that they don't necessarily manufacture, but they'll package them. And so he was telling me that it was not just supply of like meat and the ingredients he says that you know they may have all of the ingredients but it's the packaging that they're having shortages of so again it's just this this idea that we really there are no areas that are kind of unaffected by supply issues and price increases so consider those two reasons for why it's a great idea to follow tip number one buy some extra dog food to just have on hand, maybe have a three to six month supply of dog food. That may be hard to do as a big dog owner. Any extra that you can do will be helpful. And again, if prices were to double or triple in the near future, which I can't even imagine, it's hard to even fathom that in my mind, but crazier things have happened in our history. So secondarily to this tip is consider what you would do for water. Your dog needs water 
probably more than he needs food. So make sure that your dog has a supply of water. I'll tell you a really quick story. In the last couple of weeks, we had some pretty bad storms overnight. We lost power for several days. We're in a new house. We didn't have a generator. We do now, so subsequent to this issue. But we lost power for a few days and almost lost all of our our food, our human food, almost all of the dog's meat that was in the freezer. But one of the things that I realized at that time was that Junior and Sully do not love bottled water. They, they have never been great drinkers when we're traveling. And I just think there's something in bottled water and I tried all sorts of different kinds of bottled water to see if maybe there was something that they would drink, but they just don't like it at all. If your dog was like Junior and Sully and kind of finicky with bottled water, do you have a way to store bulk amounts of water? So maybe just getting, you know, five or 10 gallon plastic drum or even bigger if you can, if you have the space, maybe even have a way to filter water. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to store big giant drums of water, at least if you had the ability to filter water, you could get another water source and filter it. So that's another idea, but just think through your water and your food for your dogs and you don't have to go doomsday prepper, but, but I think it's always a good idea to consider if you lost power, how would your dog have water? If you live in a house with a well, like we do where, you know, the electric power powers the pump. And if you don't have electric, you don't have a pump, you don't have water. Think through, I mean, if you weren't able to get access to food, do you have enough in your home? So not only just your dog's food, but your own food as well. Do you have enough in your home that you could, you could live off of for a few months if needed? Shelf stable food, pasta, rice and beans, water, you know, the, the list goes on and I'm sure you can think through that stuff on your own, but okay, tip number two. Consider going to your pharmacy. If your dog is on any kind of routine medications, get those medications. See if you can't do like a th you know three to six month supply or maybe more. If, you, if your veterinarian can write the script and you can afford it and it's at a price that makes sense, consider getting your prescriptions in advance. So don't wait. If you are normally doing a monthly refill of your pet's prescriptions, consider doing a 90 day supply. Often you can get cheaper pricing if you do a 90 day supply. I have blog posts that talk about how to save money on prescription medications. It's a great, very comprehensive blog post. I'll link it in the description below. And in there, I talk about GoodRx. If you're not familiar with GoodRx, definitely you wanna take advantage of the coupons that are available on GoodRx for your pet's medications as well as your own. Make sure that you have that stuff on hand so you're not without if you weren't able to leave or you had to travel away from your home that you have that stuff that you can just stick in your go bag. Right? Okay, tip number three. I talked before about the supply issues in pet food. There are also supply issues across a whole host of other things. So for example, when we had our generator put in, there was a microchip in some kind of a switch that they needed. And so that was delayed as well. So that delayed our being able to get our generator in. The generator itself took, I think almost six months to get in stock. Tip number three has to do with a more positive spin on the whole supply issues. And that is think through what would you be wanting to get your dog for Christmas and consider buying those things now. So whether it's, you know, supply issues, so maybe not having those things in stock in the store if you wait, but it might also be price increases. So maybe consider purchasing it today just in case prices do go up, you'd be able to save a little money that way. Just have a little stash for your dog's Christmas and that way you just peace of mind, you don't even have to think about it when the holidays come around. Tip number four, schedule any routine or preventative healthcare visits with your veterinarian now instead of waiting. Don't procrastinate. From your dog's perspective, think about if you were unable to leave your home, if there was a, uh, an emergency where you had to leave your home and your dog wasn't able to have access to veterinary care uh, routinely and just as needed, consider that. So if your dog has a chronic issue that you've just been putting off dealing with, I would deal with it now. Schedule that appointment with your veterinarian now. Go over anything that you have concerns about, any preventative care that needs to be done. Again, get refills on your prescriptions and anything that your dog needs, do that stuff now. Again, I don't, I don't imagine that our veterinarians are gonna ever be closed. I, I just can't imagine a scenario where that would be the case. But, you know, in the scenario where you 
you aren't able to leave or you have to, you have to leave your home, you know, you would obviously be taking your dogs with you. And so just kind of think through that. So tip number four is make sure that you aren't delaying any routine or preventative health care for your dogs. Get those appointments scheduled today. And the last tip in this video for how to prepare for emergencies and prepare for an uncertain future with your big dog. Tip number five is have a plan. Again, what I'm not suggesting is thinking through, you know, zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Although I do like to use that as, as an example because I find it hysterical, but I'm not talking about, you know, all conspiracy theory, but what I am saying is that you just don't know what's going to happen in the future. And if prices do double or triple, which has happened in our history, you just want to prepare, right? Have a plan. So if that were to happen, what would you do? What I always recommend, and I have talked about this in my video on how to travel with a big dog. In that video, I shared, you know, what my go bag looks like for my dogs. And so I would definitely put together a go bag, like a, just a bag that is the go-to for any essentials for your big dog that you could grab at a moment's notice and have everything there ready to go. So that may mean having an extra harness on hand or an extra collar and a leash copies of your dog's shot records, you know, just anything that you can think of that's like, yep, I actually need that. Poop bags, um, nail clippers or a Dremel or something to that effect. I mean, there's just a whole number of things that if you could just have one extra and keep that in that bag so that if you did have to leave for whatever reason, you would have that on hand ready to go. Having a plan and being prepared. You know, the Cub Scout motto, as my son would always share with me, is be prepared. And I think it's just a good rule of thumb for all of us. And again, it doesn't mean that you have to think the worst of the future. I am very hopeful about our future. And but I'm also realistic in that I know it's uncertain. And while I try to make choices every day of my life that help me and my family and my big dogs be self-reliant and prepared for no matter what would happen. It gives me peace of mind to know that I don't have to worry about it. And so I just sort of let that go. And the more that I can be prepared, the better I feel. And so I would just share that with you as one kind of final thought, have a plan, get your dog food, get some a source of water, make sure that you stock up on any pet medications that your dog might need. Make sure that you are thinking through the holidays ahead of time. Consider because we are having supply issues across the supply chain, make sure that you're buying your dog's gifts now. Don't wait. And tip number four, just make sure that you don't delay any in important healthcare needs that your dog has, preventative or otherwise. So make sure you schedule those visits today and you just don't procrastinate, don't wait on that stuff. And then tip number five, make sure you just have a plan. Think through what you and your family are gonna do no matter what happens, and whether it's a natural disaster or what we saw happen in March of last year, that you're prepared should that happen and should people be willing to comply with that and things aren't open, what are you gonna do? Again, I don't wanna be doomsday prepper and I wanna leave on a very hopeful note. And that is hopefully an empowering message for you as a big dog owner, look, we face all sorts of challenges and we get through them, whether it's dealing with an, a rambunctious puppy that's bigger than you, or it's how to save money on things when your dog is, you know, 230 pounds, <laughs> right? We, we as big dog owners have to think through and plan for all sorts of things, managing big dogs and caring for big dogs that this, this is just one more piece of that. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Definitely put in the comments below any other tips that you have. If you have been through a natural disaster with your big dogs, what else would you add to this list? Definitely put that stuff in the, in the comments below because I think that's going to be helpful for all of us. What are you doing to prepare for the uncertain future that we are facing? And you know, share any thoughts or advice that you might have. I think we can all learn as a community. And with that, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next video. Bye for now.